Guilt is an unpleasant feeling that occurs when we violated our own moral standards. When we sin against God and others, guilt is the spiritual prompt that signals something is wrong. This emotion was strategically designed by God to produce conviction in our hearts so we can turn back to Him. Guilt serves a valuable purpose. It confronts our sinful tendencies and leads to repentance. However, Satan often uses guilt to keep us trapped in shame and condemnation. The enemy twists guilt into a weapon to make us feel defined by our mistakes. But as believers, we never have to stay stuck in guilt. Through Christ, we can receive forgiveness and grace to move forward in freedom. We'll look at biblical examples of guilt to explore how this emotion works on a spiritual level. From Adam and Eve's original sin to Peter's denial of Jesus, Scripture provides many case studies of guilt in action. By examining how Bible characters responded to their guilt, we can glean powerful lessons about confession, repentance, and the mercy of God available to all. Let's explore biblical examples of guilt and unpack how this emotion ultimately points us to the cross of Jesus Christ. Number 1. Adam and Eve's Guilt, Genesis 3 In Genesis 3, we find the first account of guilt described in Scripture. After Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command by eating the forbidden fruit, they immediately experienced this new feeling of guilt and shame. Verse 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Humanity's first experience with guilt centered around their nakedness and exposure. That aware that they had sinned, Adam and Eve felt guilty and tried to hide their mistake under fig leaves. But despite their efforts to conceal their guilt, they couldn't hide from the presence of God. When God confronts them in verse 11, saying, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Adam admits, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And Eve similarly responds, The serpent deceived me and I ate, both pointed fingers attempting to deflect their guilt, yet God still extended mercy. While sin always carries consequences, namely being banished from Eden, God also promised a savior who would crush the serpent's head. Even at humanity's fall, redemption was already in motion. Lessons. Guilt entered the human experience at the same time as sin. These two are intrinsically linked. Our instinct is to hide in guilt, but we can't conceal our sin from an all-knowing God. Left undealt with, guilt can quickly turn to shame and blaming. Our first parents got trapped in a cycle of trying to cover up their mistakes. Despite their failure, God still showed Adam and Eve grace by clothing their nakedness and providing a plan for salvation. Number 2. Cain's Guilt Genesis 4, verse 1, 16 Now let's examine the account of Cain and Abel in Genesis 4. After Cain murdered his brother Abel out of jealousy and anger, God confronted him saying, Where is Abel your brother? 4, 9 Cain responded, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? In his guilt, Cain dodged the question and pretended not to know, though God pressed him to confess his deed. But instead of admitting his sin, Cain became bitter, believing his punishment too great to bear. Though he deserved death for murder, God was merciful by only exiling him from the land. Yet Cain complained against the Lord's judgment. Guilt morphed into anger and entitlement in Cain's heart. Lessons Guilt often leads to hiding, pretending, and dodging accountability. But we can't hide our sins from God. Unresolved guilt can lead to bitterness and anger toward God. We start to blame Him for the consequences we're reaping. Even with horrendous sins, God extends unbelievable mercy. He restrained His wrath toward guilty Cain. Number 3. David's Adultery and Murder 2 Samuel 11 verse 1 to 12 to 23 One of the most sobering accounts of guilt is King David's adultery with Bathsheba and subsequent murder of her husband Uriah. 2. Samuel 11 narrates David's grievous sins during a time when kings were called to war. After sleeping with Bathsheba and learning he had impregnated her, David tried covering up his transgression by summoning Uriah back from battle in hopes he would sleep with his wife. When that failed, David arranged to have Uriah killed in battle. David then took Bathsheba as his wife. For nearly a year, David concealed his sins through lies, deception, and murder.
But the Lord was displeased, so he sent the prophet Nathan to confront David. Through the parable of the rich man who stole a poor man's lamb, Nathan exposed David's guilt, saying, You are the man. David responded, I have sinned against the Lord. Though David deserved death, God showed mercy. He forgave David, but there were still grave consequences. Guilt is an unpleasant feeling that their first baby died, and David's household experienced perpetual turmoil. Yet David's life was spared, and he wasn't disqualified from being king. Lessons When we feel guilt, it's best to confess quickly rather than cover up. David's year delay caused exponential damage. God pursues us in our sin through conviction. He sent Nathan to expose David's guilt. Genuine repentance brings forgiveness even for grievous sins. David experienced mercy though he deserved death. Number 4. Peter's Denial of Jesus Matthew 26, verse 69-75 Our next portrait of guilt comes from Peter's famous denial of Jesus on the night of his arrest. During Jesus' sham trials, Peter lingered in the courtyard though Jesus had just predicted Peter would deny him three times. When accusations arose that Peter was associated with Jesus, three times Peter responded by denying even knowing Christ. After his third denial, Luke 22 verse 61 says, The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. The piercing gaze of Jesus immediately produced heart-wrenching guilt in Peter. He knew he had sinned grievously against the Lord. Peter wept in repentance, feeling unbearable guilt for his failures. Yet Christ would restore Peter. After his resurrection, Jesus met Peter on the shore of Galilee and gave him the chance to reaffirm his love three times, once for each denial. John 21. Peter repented and went on to become a cornerstone leader of the early church. Lessons Guilt strikes heavily when we know we've directly let down the Lord. Peter's guilt produced weeping. Jesus doesn't write us off for our worst sins. His look of grace led Peter to repentance. God loves reinstating those who have failed him. Peter was forgiven and entrusted to lead Christ's church. Number 5. Judas's Suicide Matthew 27 verse 1 to 5 Our final portrait of guilt is among the most tragic, the suicide of Judas Iscariot after betraying Jesus. Judas arranged to hand Jesus over to the religious leaders in exchange for 30 pieces of silver. But after Jesus' condemnation, Judas was filled with remorse. Matthew 27 verse 3 to 5 says, Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Unlike Peter, Judas's guilt produced deadly despair instead of repentance. Overcome with misery, Judas killed himself, believing his sin too great to forgive. Tragically, he overlooked the boundless mercy of Christ. At the cross, Jesus even prayed for God to forgive those crucifying him, saying, Father, forgive them. Luke 23 verse 34 If only Judas had sought forgiveness instead of being consumed with guilt, perhaps he would have been restored like Peter was. Lessons Guilt, left undealt with, can lead down the path of despair and suicide. Judas saw no way out from his guilt. God's capacity to forgive exceeds even our worst sins. Sadly, Judas lost sight of this truth. We must bring our guilt to the cross, believing Christ's blood makes us clean. Our guilt is wiped away by God's grace, the hope of God's mercy. As we've seen in these examples, guilt is a dominant emotion faced by those who've sinned or fallen short of God's standards. But dwelled upon, guilt can quickly give way to shame, hiding, denial, bitterness, and despair. Thankfully, Scripture points us to a better way forward. Though our sins produce guilt, God has provided His Son Jesus to cleanse us of unrighteousness and liberate us from guilt's grip. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Through repentance and faith in Christ's finished work, we can experience total freedom from condemnation. No matter how far we've fallen, God's grace reaches farther still. Just as He restored Adam and Eve, Cain, David, Peter, and so many others from their guilt, God wants to redeem your life too. Come to the cross today. Jesus has already paid the price for your forgiveness. Now you can walk forward in freedom and joy, leaving your guilt behind forever. The mercy of God gives us hope. We simply need to humbly receive it. As you reflect on the examples of guilt in this post, be encouraged that your guilt has already been washed clean by Christ's blood. Believe this truth and let His love heal your heart fully. God is ready to use your life powerfully for His glory as you abandon guilt at the foot of the cross. Will you receive His amazing grace?